<clears throat> Hello and welcome to House Talk. I'm your host as always, Gav. Joining me today is Dave. Alright. How you doing? I'm not too bad, yourself? Yeah, good. Um, fair to say we were hoping for a busier one. Obviously, new manager, big reaction, but everybody's got Valentine's Day plans. Unacceptable. I know, I know. I mean, you did have plans and you've came along earlier, but it's your missus' birthday. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not, birthday. No, it's not because I'm being overly uh, cute, it's... That's, that's... But it's a birthday. Probably going to save me getting into trouble, pretty much. <laughs> so, I will we'll sneak it in the now. It shows a bit of commitment, by the way. Aye. And then, uh, I'll go home and get dinner or something. Sounds it's a good. Chinese, like, don't get me wrong, it's nothing too fancy, but... <laughs> no cooking or a big fancy dinner? I am not, no. 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 Chinese is better. Aye. She'll even tell you that herself, so... I think he with her there. Um, so, we have a new manager. Do we? Yeah. Um, Heckenbottom has been appointed. Mm. We did an, uh, put this on Twitter the night before, saying that we'd heard it was happening. Um, and, fair to say, those next 24 hours were not enjoyable. And that's did why. Did I tell you not to put it up? You, no, you didn't. Not say pretty to put much. Up. No, you were usually. I come to you like, should I put this up? And you're like, I or no? And you were like, oh, I guess you could. Uh. So I bet I hate. You, you could have talked me down. I see people that are like, oh, I know this and I know that, yeah. and in the, and the know, like, I hate all that. Well, the re- uh, just to give a bit of clarity, the reason we went with it was because. Um, there was a lot of things, meetings planned and things like that on the Wednesday that Hibs cancelled to kind of clear their schedule as if they had plans for press conferences and all that sort of yeah. stuff. And, um, and yeah, and so th- that was the, the plan of action was to get them in place for Wednesday to so we could concentrate on taking training today, which is the Thursday. Um, so that's what we were told. We went with it and uh, we'll no bother be being in the know on Twitter. <laughs> and there's, other, there's other pages for that. Um, we'll leave them to it. So we'll just stick to talking and re- reacting to stuff in the yeah, future. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, but can we, I just we, say one thing yeah? on this? Oh, I, I want other people to hear this. Mm-hmm. So what happened the other day was we thought we knew that Heckenbottom was going to become manager. So Gav notices that on fans bet. <laughs> that, that the odds for Hecking Bottom are twenty eight to one. Oh, I've, I've got money for it. You, for you have one money for it, I. So twenty nine to one. Twenty nine to one. I rub it in. So everybody else has got Hecking Bottom at forty seven, just kind of odds like that. Apart from fans, but who've obviously not updated it yet. So Gav's like, "Oh, get on this." But what does it? What does it do? He tweets the link. What happens? Gets taken down. Congrats to anybody else that got in there and put yeah. money on him. <laughs> Cheers. I didn't. I had it. <laughs> I had it in my basket, and then they took it off. Right. So I was going to stick a ten on that. You had it in your basket. Why didn't it come in, Dave? Because I didn't have any money in my account yet, so I had to deposit and all. <laughs> you that blamed me nonsense. for phoning you. Yeah, it was your fault. You phoned me. <laughs> anyway, so um, I feel like I'm two hundred and ninety pound down. <laughs> you were only going to put a tenner on it. So you don't know that. <laughs> the only person who knows that is myself so to make the story a bit better I was to put £10 in it £20, pu- £20 in it so you owe me money right I can give you the £29 because I put a pound on it I want £290 minimum thank you right. I'll have to go with my season <laughs> ticket for next year so you put a wee poll ask folk if you think you were out of order or no <laughs> I ain't You've got access to Twitter, you can put the poll out. Um, anyway, so it is heck and bottom. So let's, um, before we kind of, we've, we've obviously done in the last podcast, we looked at him and Appleton and we looked at their previous records. So I thought we could start off by looking at a fan's perspective. So I went on to the um, barnsleyfc.org.uk forum and uh, they were reacting to his appointment. So there was a lot of messages. Um, first few were sort of saying good luck, best of luck to him. Hope it works out for him. Um, hope he breaks the cur- the elusive twenty eight percent win ratio as a permanent manager, which is not exciting because you know we hope he does have a much higher win ratio than that at Hibs. Um, there was a weird one about a new coat on his first day, a big fancy new coat in the press conference. 
It was just and that seemed to piss off this one fan. Uh, and something about calling players and then they've put the ask asterisks, but I don't know what the curse word was. Uh, somebody felt that um, if he hadn't left, then we wouldn't have been relegated. It's a double negative, but we don't know what to try to say. If he'd stayed, they would have stayed up in the championship. Uh, and somebody came back with that to... With one win in 16 matches, um, 7 goals in 14 matches, not sure about that. Um, so, hearing the the reaction from Barnsley fans, how, how does it make you feel about the appointment? I've got a bit of trepidation about it. Right. Um, but, at the same time, I'm gonna, you're going to need to give them a chance. Championship's a hard league. Anybody could go on a bad run in that league. Um, you've seen some great managers lose their job, like Steve Bruce this season. Steve Bruce has done at other clubs, and he obviously done enough to get the Leeds job, and he got them promoted to there, and he kept them. We kept Barnsley in there, and then obviously I got the Leeds job off the back of it. So I'm confident in Leanne Dempster's decision because the last two managers. So. I don't feel like it's a bad appointment. I just feel like we're everyone's going to need to wait and see. Yeah. I, don't think we, I don't think with confidence I could come out and just say to you that now that's who I wanted. Or, you know what I mean? But does does his CV worry you? Or does what he's done in League One when he was a caretaker um, on two spells give you confidence? That gives me more confidence because it's probably... The standard of player is probably similar to... Uh, more similar to like League One standard than Championship standards. People, players leave clubs like us um, to go to the Championship. So I'm thinking that the players that he's going to come into the now might be kind of roughly the kind of level that he was working at when he was in League One with Barnsley. So hopefully, I know that's not what everybody might want to hear, but that's my opinion on it. Um, and in terms of the, I mean, he had a poor run at Barnsley. Um, Obviously, they they're, they were kind of like a League One side yeah. in the bottom of the Championship, but things weren't going their way. Um, and then he, he got the Leeds job, and you know, poor bit of form there. Um, what was it four wins in sixteen? So does that sort of you know? And and neither of those two times he turned it round. The first time he left for the Leeds job, the second time he got the sack. Um, so with Hibs in the position they're in just now does it worry you that um, he's, he's not got a history of turning things around when t- things get tough or do you think the new manager bounce will be enough to get us started yeah I, hopefully I the, the bounce is enough question. so I, the bounce will hopefully be enough um, we've got he's got a belt in our game to start with Hamilton at home um, you couldn't really have hand picked a better fixture for him considering we beat them 6-0 Um uh, and hopefully he just comes in and you, you just always feel that way where sometimes people just need to find a club that suits them and like Alan Stubbs, Alan Stubbs is one ratio everywhere else is honking but his ratio at Hibs was, was good mm-hmm. so I'm hoping that he comes in and it, it just clicks because he'll need it to click because there'll be a bit of pressure on him straight away because because he's not every, who everybody wanted and then everybody thought it was going to be Appleton and then, I mean, you've seen the turnaround on Appleton, everyone was like, oh, who, who is Appleton and who is Heckenbottom and then all of a sudden everybody started to get, get on board with the whole Appleton thing. So. Yeah. And, and speaking of Appleton, I mean, I mean he was the favourite for a while um, if you believe the rumours that um, they were, they'd chosen him to be the manager. Well, it was everywhere. And, um, yeah. So, whether you believe that, and the Suns say it break down, it broke down to uh, Appleton um, not getting a relocation fee, and also he wanted twelve months um, of a compensation package if he gets sacked, and uh, the club were only offering four. Now, can I just say I've seen a lot of fans get annoyed at the club for that and penny pension and stuff, but if he doesn't work out and we had to sack him. And get, had to pay him a twelve. Th- I mean, even with, like the Lennon thing, like oh my god, the club! I can't believe the club have been taken to the cleaners and had to pay up Lennon so much. So surely the club then putting in place something like that to pay less money if they have to sack a manager is clever business sense. Yeah, 
to that totally. And and, 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 it's, and you you put that in place, and if and a manager doesn't agree to it, then you know, okay, then we move on to the next one. Um, what other job do you get? The sack? Can you get a year's wage right. off the back it? I know. know what I mean. And the relocation fee as well it depends how much. Nobody knows how much you've been offered a year mm. to be the Hibs manager, but you bought a pretty penny. I'm pretty sure you can afford the rent for a house. Like, and it, it depends on how much you believe the sun as well. Um, because I've also heard that it might have been down to the structure of the club. Um, I listened to an interview with him uh, by the Not The Top 20 yep. um, and he was very much talking about having a hands-on approach with recruitment and youth development and you know being a hands-on manager and stuff. You look at the infrastructure in place at Hibs, we've got somebody, we've got George Craig that does the transition and youth players into the first team. Uh, we've got a recruitment team, an entire team. I always forget the boy's name. Matthew. Aye. Um, so you know they're they're all doing great jobs there. We've got people in in the right place for that. So if he came in and went, oh by the way, I want to be doing this, that, and this, and I want to be getting a bit of extra money for it, we don't know. This is all just speculation because nobody knows, and the Sun don't know. They can have sources, but you know, if he did come in and sort of try and wanted to do have a hands-on approach with other stuff, do you think the club are right to go? No, sorry, this is our setup. We made that clear before we started our interviews we'll move on to our next candidate yeah of course they are and I don't think Hibs fans have already got got their backs up over the silence over the Neil Lennon thing and then Neil Lennon had his supporters so quite a lot of people are already angry at the club so it doesn't take much for other like for fans to be like oh what we're not getting an apple now and flip off and start like you say blaming the club and I think if this had happened under different circumstances people would be like no oh, possibly but like you say, nobody knows what's going on, so how do you know how to get angry at them? Yeah. I don't think the the, cl- the club have probably not covered themselves in glory in the last like, two months. But I, c- I couldn't say you can point the finger at them for everything. It's only been three weeks. Three weeks tomorrow. Feels longer, doesn't it? Oh, it feels, honestly. <laughs> 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 three weeks tomorrow since Lennon's went? Aye. Not a chance. Aye. Really? Uh huh. That was three weeks ago the Man United Arsenal game was on the telly. And it broke. Well, would you look at that? <laughs> Mentally, there's so much happened. It's just been. I want it to go back to normal. Right. Cause for ages, I wa- I was saying this about the transfer window. I was. I want the transfer window shut because I was like, we're Scott Allen, we're Scott Allen every day, and it was all that I was thinking about. And I was like, I want to stop thinking about that. Mm. To the point, it felt like I was actually taking up time in my day thinking about Scott Allen. <laughs> And then the last wee while it's been the same with the manager. Have like, got a manager yet? Who is it? Like you're just, you're searching, you're typing into Twitter, and you're going on the forums and you're looking. And I'm just glad that it's done. We can just so focus, back to the focus on football. Saturday. Focus on Saturday, football. Saturday, Wednesday, yep. Saturday. Everybody get behind uh, Heckenbottom and and he said, "Well, the assistant manager is that Stockdale boy, isn't he?" Yeah. Uh, I've not watched the documentary yet. No. Yeah, Sunday until I die. No, I'm going to watch that now. Aye. It was on my list to watch, but I'll definitely watch it now. Before we get to Robbie Stockdale, just quickly, um, lastly on the whole Appleton thing, do you think there'll be an impact from uh, Heckenbottom being a second choice, if that is the case? Or Jing Heckenbottom will just be like, well, his loss is my job now, and take it? Yeah, well, I hope so. That's how he needs to be. Um, how would you react if you were second choice? Wouldn't they care? <laughs> no, I don't think I would If care I wanted either. the job that much, then that's the other person's loss. Yeah. So um, And I'd be more determined, if anything, to prove that I was the first choice. I should have been the first choice. Um, aye. I'm, I'm, I'm glad they came. You game. hired me before. You probably had somebody else you hoped to hire. And then uh, you you weren't the second choice, I mean. You were like fourth or fifth <laughs> choice or something. So now I got to ask you again, how does it feel to be fourth or fifth choice, Gav? <laughs> I didn't the kid that You didn't know, all right. <laughs> Sorry, mate. That's uh, fine. I've moved on to bigger and better things now, anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so yeah, uh, Stockdale's, like you say, has been appointed assistant. Do you th- um, I, was, I was listening to an interview and they've uh, not worked together before. Um, Heckenbottom did try, and try to get him. Uh, it was either um, Barnsley or Leeds before to link up but wasn't able to get him away from Sunderland um, so but they worked, they came through and done their badges together um, so do you think the fact that they've not worked together could be an issue or do you think that you're not even worried about that? 
nah, maybe have different ideas, um, which could be a good thing, different ways to approach stuff and aye, if they chuck the, their experience together. Just that that's a new dynamic, you know, like Gary Parker and Neil Lennon mm-hmm. know each other inside out and can bounce off each other, whereas Stockdale and Heckenbottom will have to develop that rapport yep. and that, that working relationship. They'll know each other on a, on a personal level and from doing their... Uh, coaching badges together but in terms of like that working dynamic that's going to be something new is that something that worries you at all or am i just looking at it too much um I, it's something that i didn't actually think about until you asked that question so i'm now going to probably go away and think about that you've put a that's dampener great. on everything <laughs> 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 nah i think i'll be fine right yeah, cool. i'll be fine um so a uh, three and a half year deal um also that takes you know the rest of the season and then our three years on top of that you um, feel that's a good statement for the club to kind of show that they're back in their man yeah it's definitely a commitment um, if it was like an 18 month deal or even just a two and a half year deal it'd be like yeah but three and a half is, a, is, is awfully long mm. it's definitely putting all your all your chips in <laughs> one basket what's the saying I can't mind all your eggs in one basket ah, chips eggs. in a basket <laughs> 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 all your eggs in one basket so aye but no I mean um, I, I, the the thing is I mean obviously this is half, glass half full but if it works then great um, because if a club wants them they're going to have to pay a big compensation fee so aye that's promising so um, finally on the manager before we get looking ahead to the next game and quickly back at the, the Scottish Cup game um, what's your thoughts on the rest of the season uh, we just need to try and win the cup and get top six. Yeah. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? That's, uh, what else can your goal be? So, definitely Scottish Cup priority mm-hmm. um, in finishing top six. So, you want to see, you know, us going... As, I know it sounds crazy, but try to be as best as possible um, between now and when From, the season. Yep. Uh, I think he's got a free hit at it. Aye. Rather than going... I tell you what, that Fraser Murray looks like a cracking young player. I'll bleed him in, and you know this is sort of like the transition period, and it mean I've got somebody that's a bit more experienced in the first team going into the next season. I or do you think he kind of goes, no, I need my best eleven every single week and try and win every game? I think we'll see, like Fraser Murray getting a game, Nellum maybe getting a game because he'll want to see everybody. So he might come in and look at it completely differently from what. Uh, Lennon was looking at it for even what Eddie May and Grant Murray were looking at when they took over. So this is a big chance for people that are on the fringes of it to come in. So I think we could see a completely different team. But if we just start playing football, scoring goals, and it just becomes fun to watch again, then I think that's all I want for the rest of this season. Because mm-hmm. Celtic in the Cup won't be easy. Uh, but I would, de- I would definitely say that it's an opportunity. There's no beaters at home in ages, so no. So, so the brand of football's really key to you, yeah. How, yeah. How we play and we get back to that. Because yeah, I mean, it's fair to say Lennon had us playing some great stuff. Um, Stubbs was, you know, that was one of the key things he'd done. Um, a lot of people sort of said he kind of compromised winning games sometimes for it, and we drew a lot of games because we we're always sticking to our, uh, playing good football principle. Um, but yeah, you feel that we need to get back to that good playing good football because it's fair to say since like we've talked about it, since about October time, it's kind of gone away. It's been murder, oh. absolutely horrible. I'd, I I want to go to a Hibs game and be entertained, come out and be like, oh, what about that move? What about that move? But sometimes we sit down and do a podcast and you're like, right, what positives have we got? And it's kind of like you're like, oh, you don't want to be negative all the time, but it's actually quite hard. To been difficult to pick out the positives when you're not having a shot on target and you know what I mean I want to see fast flowing decent football cool and and finally on that um, I just sort of quickly put Apple and I listened to the Apple in an interview where he was sort of um, on the uh, and he sort of said that he doesn't see the point in having all this possession if your defenders are passing about the defence and immediately I thought oh Dave will love the fact if we get rid of that and now we've not got Apple in. So hopefully Heckenbottom's got the same principle because uh, that, that drives me, me mad as well. The fact that Hanlon and McGregor are passing out to Gray and Gray passes it to Hanlon who passes it out to Stevenson who passes it to Bartley and then back to Hanlon. It's like, what are we achieving? 
But at the same time, we're not even in him when Hanlon's just hoofing it up the park. Because yeah. his, his long passing recently has been nothing short of <laughs> awful. <laughs> it's uh, the first I, time I've heard you call it long passing. <laughs> long passing. Well, <laughs> I'm not saying hoofball because they I give folk satisfaction, but uh, nah, definitely. Nah, we'll say hoof. He has, he has been... His distribution and uh, against Rafe Rovers was really bad. Mm. Really, really bad. We'll preview the Hamilton game and discuss some breaking news right after this. Congratulations to anyone who put on McNulty to score at any time and Hibs to win last week. Uh, we asked fans bet to enhance that last week and McNulty got off the mark for Hibs. So congratulations to anybody that's put that on. We also did put Hibs to win by three goals or more. That was the two that, that we'd put on. And obviously Wraith Rovers getting a late goal was a bit frustrating, but yeah. Um, to anybody that did put on McNulty to score though, um, congratulations. And we have got more bets for you for this week. So we got in touch with fans bet about the enhanced sods for this week. And Dave, you were the ones that came up with them. So what was it you wanted to see fans bet enhanced this week? Uh, Marlon any time. So why was it you thought about that one? Because I'm, I'm actually quite interested to see how... Um, Malin gets on under Heckenbottom, mm-hmm. considering Heckenbottom didn't play him at Barnsley. Yeah. So, I'll be keen to see if he's, well, given a chance or if this makes him uh, perform a bit better, because he's like, oh, I better get my finger out here. Um. So, aye, I wanted to see that. Most, I think there's a good chance he'll score. Most starts this season um, for Hibs, Malin, so yeah. um, surely that Heckenbottom's got to recognise that and realise he's an established member in the team and not just go, well, I didn't like it. Anyway, and Hibs, you know, pushed the boat to get him. No. Did they? Free transfer? No, they kind of they kind of did put a bit of effort on to get Malin, I would have to say. Because we kind of wanted them before we went to Barnsley. Yeah. And they didn't get him and then got him there, so... Did we have to pay anything for him, though? Couldn't tell you. Anyway, that's by the by. Um, so, Malin's score any time um, was 72, but because we requested it, it's been enhanced to 4 1. So... 10 on that, 40 quid if he scores at any time, no bad. 40 quid profit. Aye. <laughs> you get 50, aye, you get 50 yeah. back, aye, aye. Uh, I've went and checked, it's you, less than like, Bet365 and Skybet, and that's less, so it's quite a decent. Right. And uh, what was the other one you wanted to see uh, fans bet enhance? Um, to, to win by two or more goals, just because right. I think we'll, we should win by aye, two or three, so. I oh, hopefully get manager a, no. new new manager. Hopefully get to a flying start. That was five to four, similar in uh, other bookies, but that's been enhanced to six to four, um, which is better. Odds. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, if you fancy either there, make sure you head over to uh, Fans Bet, sign up, and on your profile when you select Hibernian as your club, select Hibs Talk as who you'd like to support. Massive help to the podcast, and it's going to enable us to do some exciting things really soon. So before we preview the Hamilton game, some breaking news, Dave. Just want to let us know what's happened. It's not that exciting. No, I was going to say that's the to call this breaking news. Breaking is, news. That we're, I think it's because <laughs> we've been that used to big things happening. We're dramatising everything. Yeah, our uh, kickoffs to be moved by two hours and fifteen minutes. Aye, uh, and I'm working Syrian. Uh, <laughs> Five fifteen on uh, Saturday for the Scottish Cup game against Celtic. So the second. Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm working till five because it was now a league weekend. Um, so I'm going to do some groveling. <laughs> put it that way. Doesn't uh, help when your ma- manager uh, when the manager's a, a, jambo. a jambo. I know, but he's just one of your best mates. So hopefully, but I didn't say that. He's a colleague. <laughs> <laughs> he sometimes listens through his obsession, so don't say he's my mate. <laughs> uh, um. Aye, so hopefully you get that off. So yeah, five five fifteen kick off will be sort of. Ah, it'll still be slightly dark, a couple of weeks time, um. So the lights will be coming on at least. We'll get the sunset, but it won't be really under the lights as much until late in the second half. But still, um, hopefully help create a really good atmosphere, um. Hopefully a full house, Scottish Cup quarter final, Celtic Easter Road. Sorry, I'm making this sound all the more appealing, and Dave's like. You, I'm maybe not going to be able to go yet. Nah, I'll be, I'll be there. Don't you worry. 
Um, so if yeah. I'm no, then I'll just put his name on this and folk can just tweet him abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, anyway, back to more uh, immediate. Uh, issues. Heckenbottom's first game is on Saturday. He's been taking training today, training tomorrow. Players had a day off yesterday, um, and obviously he was, you know, finishing up his deal yesterday. So, uh, training today with the manager. How do you feel that two days of training will impact? Do you think he's going to go into the game sort of looking at what we've been doing previously and not try and change too much because he's only been there two days, or do you think he might start, you know, experimenting with stuff for the word go? He'll probably keep it roughly the same. Uh, maybe take into consideration what he's seen in uh, training, and then maybe add his in. We we um, spot it. I'd like to think he, uh, the way of the philosophy maybe changes to suit him, but the personnel he just kind of tries to. Do you think in terms of like philosophy and stuff? Say he's got a preferred formation and stuff, yep. and, and in order to play a certain way, do you think he might recognise that he's going to need a couple of weeks before he can start? messing around with that and you might but need me- to go but don't think they've been messing tra- around so f- say for example they've been training in a diamond yep. the last sort of week or so playing that the last two games or the second half anyway the, the St Martin game um, or three games I eh, sorry so I mean you might kind of go yeah let's just stick to that because that's what they know that's what they've been working on and then we'll kind of take that for next week or do you think you'll start talking about with formations tomorrow so hey, I, just, I just, just thought about it now though but messing about with what because what, there's nothing really been the same for the mm. last months so like, what can he really mess about with like, I, I just sort of mean, I mean I guess when Horgan went off against St Martin ever since then we've played the Diamond um, the second half against St Martin the whole game against Celtic and then the whole game against uh, Wraith Rovers so I don't know, I just thought he might, you know, there might be a chance he'll stick to that, because that's what they've been working on, or do you think, yeah. I'd Probably just go his, see what happens, and go his own way. Yeah, that's the song, good song. Um, so, <laughs> uh, personnel, sort of just briefly, who would you like to see play? Because I mean, I know you at last game, home game, at, um, and the last league home game, uh, Ryan Gould was dropped, and I've never seen you so red. You, was as red as, you were as red as my beard. That's because I want to see him play. He's an exciting player, mm-hmm. and I want. I didn't want to be turning up and watching like an average Marlin and an average, uh, below average Horgan like that type of thing. I want to see players that are going to be on their game. Quickly, and before we look at Hamilton, what's your thoughts on Horgan? Because that's you know another fantastic performance he's put in against Wraith Rovers. Um, he played well against Elgin City. Um, he done well against Ross County, um, and, and so it's pr- arguably three best performances have came against lower league opposition this season. Um, what do you think he needs to do to build to start producing those level of performances? Do you think a new manager will help with that and maybe uh, approach them differently and sort of maybe jinx a mentality thing, or do you think it's something else? Well, it doesn't help. He's not been getting played in the right position or mm-hmm. the same position. He's been one of the ones that's getting been getting taken in and out. And yeah, he's not exactly got a consistent run in the team either. No, but I I do think that it's uh, I don't really see a great. I don't think it's a coincidence anyway that his three best games have been against poorer opposition. So uh, he might play well tomorrow because it's it's not tomorrow. That was my mistake. No, it's only Thursday. Thursday. It's your fault. Aye. He might, <laughs> it's he all might, my fault. He might end up playing against Hamilton because he's and um, playing well because it's. I don't want to say it's only Hamilton. This will come back to bite me in the bum. Um, but <laughs> only Hamilton. The, the team that relegated us the last time we thought it's only Hamilton. It's the road. What happened? Um, so I'll not think that. In fact, but I just I personally don't think that he's Horgan's good enough for us. Unfortunately. Well, I, I, d- I wouldn't agree with that. I think there's a really good player there. I think his, especially some of the runs he's been making and stuff's been really good. It's more his decision making in the final third. He he seems to be a great player with a brain at times. Um, and I think I mean you, the fact that he was he was doing well um, for Preston before he kind of fell out of favour, and he's been in the Republic Republic Ireland set up a lot. Um, he doesn't. He's not. That's no by fluke. 
yeah, there's a good player in there. I think maybe just something's no went right in terms of whether it was the way the manager played him or um, the way I approached him in the, the change room and spoke to him and stuff. I don't know what it's been. But, yeah, um, I think this could be a new lease of life for somebody like him. Player, There's been a couple of players like him that kind of maybe not been either hitting previous heights that we've seen them or are capable of more. So, hopefully a fresh start for a lot of folk like him. Um, and somebody just tells him to be a bit more clever in the box. Um, but we'll see. Well, that's that's one of the exciting things about the rest of the season. Um, not just a new manager, but potentially new leases of life. For, yeah, I'm not going to write him completely off, but I just think um, whenever, whenever I watch him, I very ever rarely see him in a good game, and he's one of the fl- players that I find myself getting really frustrated at during a game. Yeah. Um, so, Hamilton. They are sitting in 10th place, and they are three points outside the playoff um, places, six points away from the relegation zone. Uh, their last, their form in the last five games have you know lost three games and then drawn one and then won their last game. Um, what about their their form this season, Dave? What have you kind of noticed or picked up with their form this season? They've only won two games away from home, right? So we've got to look at that and be pretty confident. And when was the last time they won a game at home? Uh, start of December or something I'm sure Right. Uh, against St Martin right. which is no great shakes right. and then I think the other one was Motherwell it's pretty much their back garden <laughs> ah, well, it's like a wee, a wee bit of niggle in that match in a derby right. so uh, they won that so that's the only two away games they've won so right. so I mean they're not having the, 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 and they've just got a new manager in as well um, Brian Rice aye uh, is this his first game or did because I don't they were there at the Scottish Cup so I might, think might be his first game, I. Eh? I don't know if they played the night we played Celtic. Um, so yeah, this might be his first game. I'd, uh, we should have checked that. Um, that's good post podcasting, not checking that. But yeah, um, I've obviously um, been at Hibs um, before. That's, so their manager and their assistant manager both have previous with Hibs. Obviously, Boozy's still there as assistant. So, um, I too. I was going to say I hope he does well, but then I didn't because I want that pitch at the league. <laughs> Pass it pitch. Uh, so. Well, that I was thinking about talking about that today because that's one of the things the players ha- are taking steps to. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, but that we could get into a whole debate about that. That could be a whole podcast dedicated to that. They um, not know that. Um, oh, his name's went in my head. St. Johnson, played the Hibs. Liam Craig. Liam Craig was head of the PFA for the really? players. Really? There you go. Good for him. Yep, did not know that until the day. I, I, he's, he's a player that gets booed by Hibs fans. I don't get that. Can you, I, I, if somebody wants to explain to me, that'd be great. Because <laughs> I just. I know that he was in the team when we got relegated, but, you know, so were a lot of players. Um, and I don't think it was his fault that we got relegated. It was bit Butchers and the fact that we had no defence. Uh, but. Yeah, I mean, he he done well in the in the first season in the championship, and then left to go back to St Johnston because he was falling out of favour because we had such a good midfield. Um, so nah, I don't I, I don't get it. But anyway, um, Hamilton this season, you know, they're averaging less than a goal a game. Uh, their XG's only zero point seven eight, so they're really not creating a lot of chances as well this season. Um, I not managing a lot of possession they're, they're very very rarely manage more possession than their, their opponents so what kind of game are you expecting you know looking at some of the stats with, with Hamilton and looking at their form and their record away from home what kind of game are you pre- expecting or is it a bit of an unknown with two new two managers two or three now I wouldn't expect it to be any different to what ha- the type of team we faced in Wraith Rovers that we can do they might have their odd wee moments but we should be dominating and be winning quite comfortably. Mm-hmm. Ah, so score predictions for the game. I'm gonna go three 0 Three 0 Um, I'll go a bit more conservative. Two 0 Ah, uh, nice. Two 0 win. Get off to a good start. Clean sheet. Build for there. So thank you for coming along, Dave. Not a problem. So uh, other than the Chinese, mate, any plans for tonight? Um, what? Well, going to watch Europa League. Sounds like a good birthday. Is uh, your missus getting a? Saying that, or is that just happening? No, nah, well, unfortunately, she happens to be. Uh, she likes Celtic, so she actually used to go to games. And so, is it Celtic games you're going to watch? Yeah. 
go and sit and watch the Celtic game. Nah, I'll probably uh, be more exciting than the Arsenal game or the nah, Chelsea I quite, game. I quite like watching um, the Scottish teams in Europe and and Scottish football in general. So it's because there's a connection. So aye. and I guess Valencia will be it'll be a cracking tie. Yeah, hope so. so. Aye, watch the disco lights. Aye, get your bets on floor. for it with fans bet. No, no <laughs> I, I think we'll see what happens, but I'll be good. Do I want to say that? No. Nah. I was going to say it would be good for Scottish football, but and then everyone would <laughs> be know. like, oh, it's a Celtic loving. <laughs> but it's really no. Nah, just, I, I, don't, I don't get that. It's I mean, Celtic I know, loving. I know oh, the coefficient. Nah, I hope Celtic get gubbed 7 0 tonight. No, I really. I had any. See, I, I, I don't. And I was going to say I would hope Rangers would win in this situation, but I'd be a liar. <laughs> I would be a liar. <laughs> oh. But, no, it's out of it. But the only thing I would say is that. Um, she didn't get that good birthday presents because of the skin. Because I never got any money for hiking bottom. <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. <laughs>